And now, here's your host of Shaping Success, Wes Tankersley. What is up, everyone? Welcome to Shaping Success with myself and Robert Watson for the Wednesday edition. We are here. We haven't discussed it. Robert is fresh off the run, right, Robert? <laughs> exactly. As you can see, the sweat pouring down. Yep. Trying to, trying to fix technology as I go. So we got <clears throat> one. I don't know. I'm not sure if you want to talk about it, but we've got one last chapter in the book called Celebration. It's the very last chapter, or we can talk about something else, Whatever, whatever you feel like today. Well, what are you up for? You want to do uh, off the cuff? Yeah, that's fine with me. It's always, you know, it's always kind of the way it is. We talk about what's going on, where we're at, things like that. Well, uh, what do you think about all the appointees to the new Trump administration? He is not um, slowing down. I see them roll out slowly but surely. You know, I think it's great because I don't think he was this prepared the last time. And I think we talked about that last episode too it's like i feel like yeah. he's got a different situation going on here and i think that it's going to be a complete we're going to see something different i think um yeah i think one of the things that i really like is the fact that he has already and he's shown it this is what's different this time than the last time is that he's shown that he's going to he's already appointed people that he needs in in his in his situation to make things better for him and so to me yeah. that's important um, yeah, yeah I, I think the thing that, and this is probably the best thing to talk about, I understand how everybody gets fixated on, on Joe Biden or President Obama or President Bush, but it's really not the president. It's the 2,700 plus people they appoint underneath them. Mm -hmm. It's literally how good of a manager you are because, I mean, you can only be so good. You just can't direct that kind of traffic. Right. If you're not a very effective manager, you don't have very, very good people in underneath you. And so I think unfairly so you'll get a president um, like probably Biden didn't get credit for some of the things that he did mm -hmm. just because it was just such um, poor optics. Right? right. In other words, everybody was obsessed with inflation, so he didn't get credit for a lot of the things he did right. And that's sad, but that's a fact of life. And so maybe a decade from now, we'll recognize, oh, look, he did have, he had some really good legislation or whatever, but we won't know that because he actually just did a, such a poor job rolling it out. Yeah. It's, it's funny, uh, Nikki is talking about Tom Homan, the uh, borders are is what mm -hmm. Trump is calling him. Uh, right. And it's amazing for me to listen to him talk. I'm very, you know, there's two sides of this whole deal. And, you know, I think from being from the background that I am, it's kind of like a no bullshit deal where um, I typically want people to um, tell me how it is. Right. And that's what he's doing. You know, one of the things that I keep seeing over and over again is this uh, clip with him and AOC talking about how, like, do you believe in separation of separating children from their families? And he keeps coming back to the situation of what happens to people who are from here, you know, and he used the, I like the, the example of if you get a DUI with your child in the car, what happens? You are separated from your child. It's like, this is not just something that happens, you know? And then it, the other thing was, well, what do you do about deporting people who are illegal with, with legal people? And it's like, they don't have to be yeah. deported separately. They can be deported as a family. So like the choice is really theirs. They came here illegally. They had children here. Those children become legal or whatever. They essentially need to take their children back with them. They can be citizens of that other country. You know, um, it's tough when you have, and, and people will bark back at it, but I looked at like the Canadian, it's not, I was talking to uh, AJ about this yesterday and Nikki, but the, Canadian, it's not the Canadian prime minister, but I think it's directly below who was talking about their border and how their border is. And it's like, this is just normal. Like countries have borders. If you want yeah. to come here and seek asylum, do it the correct way. Cause AOC keeps saying, well, it's asylum. It's asylum. It isn't if you just legal or legally cross the border and then say asylum, it's like you go through the port of entry, you ask for asylum, you get put where you are and they allow you in or in the country, you know, these people are not yeah. being allowed in. They're just coming in, and that's the problem. Well, yeah, and science, math, and things, I see you down in the comments. I hope you're still here. <clears throat> the 300% tariffs will create problems. I totally agree. Here's one of the things. Just because you like a one policy, say, on immigration, 
doesn't mean you like the economic policies. Like, for example, um, I know what tariffs do to an economy, right? I know what tariffs do in the international system. It's not the smarter option. I understand what the, the, the idea in the theoretical underpinning is, but they just don't work very effectively. And they tend to penalize the person that puts the tariffs in. That doesn't mean, you know, that I across the board agree with every policy that a new administration is, because there's policies in the Biden administration that I agree with. This is not an all or nothing bipolar thing where we go, oh, you know, red, good, uh, blue, bad. That's right. not it. No, it's policy by policy. And the reality is, is that, yes, tariffs, I understand the idea of protecting your environment, protecting your economy. Mm -hmm. But tariffs do hurt, especially when you think about goods that are not easily substituted, right? Yeah. If you can't, like if we said that we're going to put a tariff on Colombian coffee, my apologies to the Colombians, I'm not picking on them. But if we decided to put a tariff on Colombian coffee, you do realize there's lots of other coffee choices, right? Right, And that will directly affect the Colombians. Why? Because we have other choices. So what we'll do is when the tariff goes, when we will call what's called substitute. We mm -hmm. will just go buy Costa Rican coffee. Right. So guess who gets hurt? The Colombians. That makes perfect sense, right? If you want to drink Colombian coffee, you're going to pay some god awful price for it. Go ahead, but you have substitutes. When we see Get ourselves choices. in a problem, right? When we see ourselves in a problem where you don't have a natural substitute, that's when tariffs really sting because that tariff gets passed on to us. And that tariff becomes inflation in our system. So you do have to be careful with this all or nothing blanket. Um, but again, when, on a selective basis, they have merit. Overall, in a general, no. They cause an entire problem with the overall economy. It's really, a, and incidentally, in the old days, tariffs used to create wars. Yeah. Okay, the, this is not, this stuff's not a joke. And so that's, it's, can be bad economics to just make blanket statements, right? It's, it's what we do when we overgeneralize things. Like you were talking about border and we use words like asylum or whatever. Those are overgeneralizations that we need to get specific about, right? Yeah. If you're trying, if you're a political, I, I talked to a guy who worked with resettlement and refugee groups and he was talking about these refugee groups that came in legally as refugees, right? and how much they're challenged to come into the system. He says the good, the bad, and the ugly of the system. Well, I don't know about you, but I don't know much about refugee resettlement in the United States. I just don't. Yeah. Right? That's not something I understand. That's something I had to learn. I sat there for 30 minutes and I said, okay, man, tell me about it because I don't know anything about it. Right. How many refugees do we take in? What is that called? Is that legal immigration? It is. Yeah. Right? And that's well, the thing I think that in. a lot of us don't do is we don't do the research. You know, like I have I have questions about the tariff thing, but there's also this, you know, people are complaining about Trump saying, I'm going to do tariffs. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that, blah, 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 blah. Right. But Trump did that before. And correct me if I'm wrong, but Biden didn't undo the tariffs that Trump did. So we've been living in a tariff world for four years. So this is yeah. this is the thing. It's like understand that one way or another the other side of that coin is the fact that there is there is stuff still going on it's just you don't agree with what one side is doing you agree with what the other right. side is doing because who they are and they didn't hurt your feelings when they talk to you but the reality right. is is all this stuff goes on in the background and we just don't pay attention to what it is we don't know because there's so much going on that you can't keep track of it. So make sure that when you sit there and you make a choice based on something like that, that you actually have gone through and, you know, broke through those and sussed those out, you know? Right. I'm, I'm writing a, a piece for uh, foreign affairs on tariffs, on the one of the reasons why we ended up in the problem we did with the middle class being pummeled for the last 50 years is it was a po it's policies that we put in that we did to ourselves. And now what we're doing is we're putting in tariffs to fix our bad economics. Yeah. Okay. So really the interesting part is, is who's responsible for this mess? We are. Yep. Okay. That's one of the things that we have to come to terms with and we're not. So what we're doing is we're ignoring it. We're saying, 
China bad, this kind of thing. They're predatory. No, they are being predatory. No question. Here's the problem, though. We allowed them to be. Yeah. Because we knew the theory when we've known it for 75 years. We've known exactly how this stuff works. And what did we do? This is back to leadership, right? What did our leaders do? Our leaders made a bunch of really, really bad choices, right? And yep. then you get yourself. And so what do you do instead of taking responsibility, say, hey, you know what? After World War II, this is what I should have done. As leaders, we should have done. We screwed up. Instead, we don't do that. What we do is we say China did it. No, China yep. didn't do it. We allowed China to do it to us. Are they being predatory? Absolutely. But were they predatory just by themselves or did we let them in the door? We did. But see, we don't ever take responsibility, just like COVID, we don't take responsibility for not having enough hospital beds. Right. What we do is we say this is an incredible crisis beyond imagination and we're going to be overrun and let's blame somebody. Yep. Well, most of the time, and it's like us, me personally, most of the mistakes that are made, I'm not really the victim. I'm the victim of myself. Okay, it's bad choices that I make. Right. Then all of a sudden I go, oh, it's like the guy who says who who's kind of let himself go. And he says, my lower back hurts. And you say, oh, your lower back hurts. Well, is the fact that you have a big gut in the front have anything to do with your lower back hurting? <laughs> and the answer is, yeah, it does. And so, but you say, I'm the victim of... And I'm like, no, you're not the victim. You're the victim of yourself. Exactly. You created the situation. And then you're upset that it was created. And that's what I think we need to be a little bit more intellectually honest in this country yep. about our mistakes and just say, OK, you know, and we can't run around pointing fingers. I don't care what president. Did. It's President Johnson. He's the one who screwed up. No, 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 no. That's not my point. All of our leaders did. And we, as people who vote them in and out of office, are responsible for that. Yeah. So why don't we just recognize that the mistake was made and go, OK, bad policy. Let's fix the policy. It's kind of that old barn door joke. Yep. You know, all the horses are out, so now you're going to close the barn door. I'm like, why don't you recognize why the barn door was open and then say, what's the policy for the barn door the next time? But again, it's much better to villainize somebody right. and say, some outsider did this. I'm like, no, we do this to ourselves. Yep. It's just time for us to be honest enough with our, and that's even when, you know, even the simplest things we do as people, this is on us. And I don't think we want to take responsibility because we, we, then we feel like, well, if you, if you take responsibility, then I admit that I'm wrong. I'm wrong all the time. Right. I mean, on a very regular basis, right? I think that that's the funny, though. Thing. Like, we're all that way. It's it, And people just yeah. don't understand that. The problem is, is when you can't admit that you're wrong. And we get stuck in yeah. that way where we're like, we're wrong. <laughs> Adam Sandler has this funny uh, skit that he's talking about where he's sitting at the table and someone says something and they're having a conversation or whatever. And he goes, no, I'm right. And they go, no, you're wrong. And then he gets out his phone and then he looks it up and then... He realizes that he's wrong, and then he throws his phone in a glass of water so that no one can see yeah. it. You know, he's so like, you know, so I'm not going to admit it. <laughs> yeah, and, and I think that the thing I learned being a pilot was this: you're off course almost all the time. Uh -huh. Okay, and what you're doing is you're constantly correcting. You're constantly correcting. We don't sit in the cockpit and go, "Oh, I was wrong again. Oh, I was wrong again. Oh, I was wrong." No. Make the correction. It's correct, 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 right? Because mm -hmm. no one cares about being wrong. They care about getting to their destination. Yeah. Can you imagine if airline, every airline pilot was up there in the front seat going, I'm wrong, I'm wrong, I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Come on, man. Yeah. You just keep correcting and correcting and correcting. And I think that's the same thing in life. We just got to get into the m mindset of understanding that failure, that there isn't really failure if you don't stop. Yeah. OK, all you're doing is you're just off course. You're just going to correct. I'm just going to continue to correct and continue to correct. It's like us, you know, like when we're trying to diet or something. Right. Mm -hmm. And we then, you know, kind of munch down on a quarter bag of chips. Right. Yep. Wasn't actually on the agenda. Right. The quarter bag happens. of chips is not really. <laughs> but it happens. And so what you do at that point is you go. OK, move on. OK. Give me the cucumber. 
Where's the cucumber and the ranch dressing? Okay, right? Back to bland. <laughs> Back to bland. Well, because isn't that what we're going to do during the holidays? Yeah, right? exactly. Right? We're going we're gonna to eat a little bit outside of our realm. We're going to try not to put on. It, it's so funny. Like, for me, I have this cycle, right, where it's about five pounds that I cycle through every year. Mm -hmm. And during the summer, I lose the five pounds. During the winter, I put the five pounds back on. During the next summer, I take the five pounds off. I put yep. the five pounds back on. And somebody says, well, don't you try to correct for it? I said, not anymore. It's just a kind of a fact. I mean, I just know that I'm going to put on a couple pounds and I'm going to take them off. And I just try to be <clears throat> as guarded as I can when I know I'm in the gaming cycle, which is the fall. I try to be a little bit more responsive to, you know, my desire to have uh, monster tacos at Jack in a Box. Okay. You know. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Hey, just so you guys know, please share the live, keep tapping the screen, help us to get this out. But we're going to shift gears a little bit here because I wanted to talk to you about something else, Robert. Um, it's mm -hmm. funny. I don't know if you saw this, but it's there's this thing going around where news ratings are really down, like actual national news, like CNN right. um, yeah. viewership and all that stuff has dropped. MSNBC put out a poll where or put out something where a lot of a lot of their ratings have dropped as well. And I think it's funny to see because people seem to be getting their information from different places now because their narrative and what I thought, what I think is my, my thoughts on it is that it's become an opinion thing. The, the news has been become like Fox, NSNBC, CBS, ABC is not anymore the news, but an opinion show like The View. They've all become this is our opinion on what's going on. And to get your right. real news, you have to go places like Joe Rogan or Charlie Kirk or I don't know some of the I, I don't watch some of the other podcasters, but there's that's where people are getting their information. The all in podcast is one that I listen to. Like if you want the real news, you're not going to the news because you're to national news because it's opinion and it's getting kind of old. What are your thoughts on the ratings drops? And I thought it might be just because of the election. But its actual ratings have dropped drastically for these places after the election, but they've been dropping at an alarming rate. And the election just kind of boosted it for a little bit, and now it's back down to dropping more. Yeah, so I happen to be – one of the things I did was after I got my master's in international policy, I wanted to go do a PhD. But I was deficient in communication studies, so I went to University of Houston and began a mass comm, mass communication study. And so guess what we study, right? The effects in media. And so we've been looking at um, the drop or the decentralization, they call it the fragmentation of media, which is simply this. this. When I grew up, there were three networks. Three networks had the news. There was local and then national, right? We did those in 30-minute segments every single night during the week. Everybody knew that everybody was on the same page. There was only three networks, therefore you got your news either out of your newspaper or from the three networks. That was how the information came, right? Wasn't yeah. any online, wasn't any national. So as technology has stayed, we've got into this disintermediation where you all of a sudden see media uh, splintered all over the place. And the fact is, is that media has become more opinionated, right? Uh -huh. And so it's become almost siloed. So it's become polarized. In other words, if you are, if you're center leaning, right? In other words, I'm very much of a moderate. Tell yep. me what show, what news service is for moderates. You can tell me which one's for the left and you can tell me which one's for the right, but tell me which one's for the middle. Yep. Right. And, and Very is, difficult. Yeah. <laughs> right. And, and guess where everybody, most people in America are? They're in the middle. Despite right. what people believe, most people's policies, if you get down and look, you sit down and talk rationally, most people's policies fall in the middle. That may mean you had one policy on maybe abortion that's far right or far left, but a lot of your other policies are kind of right in the middle. Well, there isn't any news service for that. So what is literally recommended at this point, if you want to get the news, and I mean, this sounds bizarre as I'll get out, but you actually need to go to CNN and listen to 10 or 15 minutes of them. Right. And maybe go over to Fox and listen to 10 or 15 minutes of them. 
And then guess what you find out? Take the two of them, average them, yep, <laughs> put exactly. them together, and now you've got a version of the truth. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and that's. But, I think that that's kind of the tough thing is like you sit there and you look at like, of course, I, I don't have three hours to sit there and listen to Joe Rogan because his podcast right. is like super long and you can catch it from here and there. <clears throat> but the reality is he's going to ask the questions that need to be asked. And as Nikki said, middle ground isn't exciting enough for news outlets. So you have to be high Ooh. on one side or high so on true. the other side. And usually so it true. generates on the hate side of that because they don't look at what is actually helpful to the country. They think about what is not. It used to be if it bleeds, it leads. Okay. But I like to think of it this way. If there's friction or fiction, that's what's in media. Yep. In other words, if there's a really good lie, that's out there. And if there's really good turmoil, that's out there. Right. But if you're just wanting to tell people, for example, if you're just wanting to tell people, hi, good morning, it's Houston. The temperature's 62 degrees. Right. The weather is partly cloudy. How exciting is that? Exactly. <laughs> but guess what? I actually need to know when I get up and run in the morning, I need to know it's 62 and partly cloudy. Yep. Right? And if you need to know, especially local, one of the things that's happened with local newspapers going away, right? This is back to your original thesis of very right, very left. Local newspapers are gone. So if you want to figure out what's going on in your local election, where do you go? Yeah, do you, you even have a place to go? Well, the newspaper like here, and I don't know, does, I, so you're in a bigger state than I am, but in Idaho, it's right. like they have a paper that came out every single day. I remember getting the Idaho Statesman when I was a kid, when mm -hmm. I was in, when I lived in Oregon, and you could get both because it was right on the border, the Idaho Statesman or the Argus Observer, which was the local news. And that's where you would get your information. However, now it's like they're all going digital and then they want to charge you to look at it digital. And, and it's like, where are you going to go? You're going to go to the easy place. You're not going to pay for news because a lot of times the news is bullshit. <laughs> so that's well, the Yeah. And my, my son said to me, he said, okay, dad, Wall Street Journal, New York Times, Washington Post, they all have paywalls. Yeah. He said, but I'm guessing you have, you've got subscriptions to every one of them. I said, I do. Yeah. Why? Because if you want to look at how national news is constructed, it for me, it's New, it's Wall Street Journal, New York Times, Washington Post, and the Financial Times out of London. That's what I read every day. And when you ask, what do I read? I open the front pages of each one of them. That's yep. it. Why? Because I'm like everybody else. I don't have two hours to sit there and go through news. Yep. So what I do is I scan, right? 15 minutes later, I'm done scanning. The world hasn't blown up, whatever. But that's what you have to do. And so you have to be kind of a smart consumer. One of the young lady in our class said this. She walked in after the election and she was mad. And she said, here's what I consume left leaning news and yep. the left leaning news told me Harris was going to win. The left leaning news said it was going to be a close race, but Harris was going to lose. She said, I woke up and Trump stumped her. Yep. And she said, now, hold on. How can that possibly be that they lied to me? <laughs> and I just, and I, it, was, it was so stunning because I'm like, this is an intelligent woman, this woman in a master's program. And yeah. I'm thinking, that's not really even the question you should ask yourself. And yeah. I said it openly in class. She said, what should I ask myself? What else are they lying to you about is what you should ask. Yeah. Okay. Because the only reason you knew you were lied to was why? Because you had a metric afterwards. Right. What about the things you don't have a metric on? Right. OK. Do you know? I said, do you, are you serious? Are you trying to tell me that everything you believed before that your news, the left leaning, was all right and the right leaning news was all wrong? You really believe that? Yeah. I said, that's where the problem is, because she was visibly mad. And I just, I, I mean, we really have gotten into a generation where they don't know any better, mm -hmm. right? That you don't look at the per. I mean, my God, when you grew up, okay, you had that friend, everybody does, who was full of bullshit. Right. <laughs> okay, you, everybody has that friend that's just full of crap and who call, who will be the one to spread a rumor, right? Yep. And it's not true. And, and you know it. So when that person comes running up to you and said, hey, Wes, someone just smashed the shit out of your car. Yeah. 
you're like, <laughs> are you Why? sure about that? It's like, it's, well, I don't sure know. It depends on how gullible you are, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Well, where'd you hear that from? Well, Johnny told me. Where well, Johnny? Sue. Well, well, who told Sue? Becky. Yep. Hold on a second. Can I just go check out my car, please? Back into the damn telephone game. <laughs> right, exactly. But but again, that's because you knew you looked at the source who brought you the information and you went, I don't think I'm really buying that. Yep. Right? Like all of a sudden, hey, did you know that Joey hooked up with Sally? Am I going to believe you? Right. <laughs> right? Now, when Sally walks up to you and says, I hooked up with Joe, you go, you did? Really? Your taste has fallen that low. Yeah. <laughs> you know? That's a big thing. You know, Craig said, I watch all the news ad is and, and and what did I say? I watch them all, then research the fact check, all of them, because that's what you have to do. That's the reality yeah. of it. It's like, they're going to just try and say something to you that will yeah. make it so that you believe what their side is. And the problem that we have is no one is doing the research anymore. And if no one does the research, then what happens to us? You know, that's yeah. that's the big thing. What happens now is that people will start to believe what's going on and not know the actual truth of it. It's funny. I was looking at this. This other thing that's on the news right now is this 4B movement, right? This is the big thing. And I'm sitting there going, OK, so these people believe that they should not. They're going to shave their head to make themselves more unattracted to, to men. Mm. They're going to abstain from having sex they're going to abstain from having kids they're going to extend it's like how is this helpful you know what is this doing for that like in my mind it's like if these people are that nuts it's uh you know i'm glad because then that means that they're not going to recreate more people <laughs> it's it's yeah, that yeah, easy I mean, right i mean it's I mean, it's insane though that they think that this is what's going to actually help their cause well but again you know we've always had extremists and, yeah. and really, any time you buck the system, because right in 1776, this country decided to buck the system, mm -hmm. right? Caught a little little revolution, you know, the, the as the British call us, the colonies, right? Yeah. You know, we decided to do something a little different. We decided to go out on our own. But people go back and go, well, this was a highly patriotic thing. Well, it's not really highly patriotic. It was hitting people's pocketbook. And right. the merchant class got ticked off and said, you know, I can't do this anymore. It wasn't the guy out on the farm at the edge of town who was being adversely affected necessarily by the British. He was like looking at because he was British. Right. And so my point is, is we, we always have to be careful to understand that revolution is just some one person's idea of change. But, you know, extremists are extremists are extremists. Right. I mean, is that really what you want? I mean, like you said, are we really helping anything? What are you doing in your cause? What are you doing to forward your cause? Right. And, and does anybody believe that you, by shaving your head or doing whatever else you're doing, that you're making the kind of statement that takes the takes civilization and humanity forward? Yeah. Are we going forward? I don't think so. No, and I mean, a big thing about that, too, is like, just like we were saying, like, if they're going to abstain from that, Craig says that they're saying, hey, we're not going to date unless you have a vasectomy, this, that, and the other. And it's like, okay, so now we're going to sterilize the whole country. What's going to happen when everyone is gone? <laughs> we're not going to have an economy. <laughs> this is just insane. It makes no sense to me. Where is this coming yeah. from? <laughs> well, but, but again, you know, it's, it's like putting two into, as my, as my great friend says, you know, she doesn't understand the math and mathing. That's what she's trying to do. She's trying to understand that. Yeah. Explain this to me so that I can understand because it doesn't math out. Nope. It doesn't. And that's a lot of the way people approach things. And I, I, stop, take a breath, breathe, and realize in some of this, these cases, there isn't a right or wrong answer. Right. Because again, in human, human affairs, right or wrong doesn't necessarily enter the picture. It's just one version or the other. In gravity, it's a simple thing. There is gravity, and if you try to defy it, it will hurt. Yep. Okay, that. I think the big thing to say here, and we're going to end with this because our 30 minutes is up, but yep. what I want to say is here's the deal. You guys sit here and you, not you guys, and I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the public in general. Just remember when people are, when you're listening to people, you can't take our opinion because we're sitting here talking to you. You know, you can listen to us, but go listen to the other side too. 
and think about yeah. it and do the research so that you make a correct choice when you're trying to make your choices. Because the problem is, is that people do not do that. They do not research both sides. They take what they hear. I have family members who tell me a lot of things. And then I say, well, where did you hear that? Well, I got it off of Facebook. Okay. Well, Facebook, Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it, all those places probably have a little bit of the news, but they only have part of the story. You're going to right. these news outlets like Fox, like MSNBC, like CBS, you're going to see, and I saw this very heavily on the on the election night where I couldn't get any of the conservative side of it, but I got all the liberal side of it. And you're like, all they're doing is hating on him, hating on Trump, and then they're building up Harris. But the reality is, is that's not what everyone thinks. And so you have to search out because it's very hard to find that information and you are not going to find it in the national news. So do your research. Yeah. Don't take anyone's word for it. Um, my friend Brian used to have a podcast called See Through It, and it's like, don't believe the hype. See through it. Go find it. Go search it out. Very, very true. And, and as, you, as you said, as we look at understanding that media is stilted one way or another, just look at the source. Just yep. look at the source. Remember what side they're going to be giving you, and that's okay. That's fine. It's Sometimes it's good to hear both sides of the argument, right? Yep. Yeah, and it just makes sense. Again, uh, if we wish human affairs were like gravity, it was simple. We could calculate it, but we can't. Yep. A lot of human affairs are, it, it, it's, I guess the best thing is it's messy, to yep. say the least. Thanks for hanging out with us. If you guys want to support the show, you can subscribe here on TikTok. You can head over to mm -hmm. Patreon. You can subscribe anywhere that you listen to podcasts. We're almost to 50,000 on the downloads on the podcast side of the things. Go check out the YouTube videos. Please make sure you like, share, comment, share this if it has helped other people out. Thank you to our Patreon supporters, Nikki, Anna, and Wendell. We also have some supporters up here um, on TikTok as well. But if you guys want to help the show, it's the easiest way to do that is to just subscribe. You can also just comment and share this out. Thanks for hanging out, Robert. And we will catch you guys on Monday. Appreciate you. Yep. Y'all take care. Go check out Robert's book if you want some motivation. This is kind of what it's all about. We're trying to motivate people to see through a lot of things going and moving forward.